welcome back to my channel and yet another weekend <laughs> i hope everyone's having a lovely saturday um today's video is going to be about aiden's birth story um i feel like if i'd done this channel last year this probably would have been one of the first videos that i've done but nevertheless i thought i would do one now um better late than never and it was requested so i thought why not Perfect timing. <laughs> I guess we'll start on the day that um, my water broke. Yeah, we'll start there. <laughs> okay, so it was a Thursday, I believe, Thursday the 24th of May last year, and I actually had a doctor's appointment. So I'd gone to my doctor and he checked me out and said, look, you know, it could happen any day now. Um, I was about 37 weeks and four days at that time and at that point I told him I didn't want to go all the way to 40 weeks um, if you guys don't know like before I got pregnant with Aiden I'd actually got pregnant and had a miscarriage so I was just super like just tense about the you know the pregnancy the whole time and my doctor knew it so he didn't want me to go all the way to 40 weeks too so he was you know happy to sort of help me what do they do like break membranes or something I don't know something like that they like help to like induce you without the medication I think it's something like that he was gonna do that like at 38 weeks or 39 weeks um, to help me out um, so that I didn't have to wait till 40 or 42 weeks um, hoping that Aiden was gonna be late but I actually was on my way home and I thought, oh, I've got my swimming stuff in the car because I used to go swimming while I was pregnant with Aiden. And so I thought, okay, let's, let's go swimming. So I went swimming and usually I only stay there for like 30 minutes tops and then I go home. But that day, um, there was this lifeguard, this guy who had just had a baby. And he was so chatty, just talking about the whole experience, his wife's waters broke while they were sitting on a couch, like just telling me everything, right? And basically I ended up staying at the pool for about an hour and a half. <laughs> like, it was a long time. And he was just chatting with me and basically just talking to me and I was trying to do my exercises while he was talking. And then I'd get distracted and have to start again. Like it was fun, like he was, he was making me nervous though because he was just like it can happen anywhere and i was just like oh god <laughs> anyway so i swam for a long time and aiden was pretty active while i was in the water like i could just feel him moving and swimming around like he was enjoying it he loved it and then after swimming i just went home it was like a normal evening um we went to bed and went to bed probably around 10 30 11 so it was like a, an early night and it must have been around 11 30 probably like an hour later i like literally i was sleeping and then i just jumped like i just jumped out of bed not completely out of bed like i jumped up i felt something like something was coming like it was weird i jumped up jumped out of bed stood beside the bed and this water just like just gushed out and it was just like like a faucet licking onto the carpet and I didn't even know what to do I was just standing there like I ran and turned the light on went back to where I was standing stood there still like what the hell and basically just started yelling at Mark like Mark Mark my water broke oh my god I think my water broke and Mark literally jumped out of bed and he was just like, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> like, it was a funny night, you guys. I didn't expect that to happen at all. Like I was expecting to go all the way to like 40 weeks, which is what I do want. But like it literally happened the night my doctor was like, it could happen anytime. <laughs> okay, so I called the nurses and they're like, all right, that's fine. Come in, you know. Um, but usually, you know, if you feel water's broken, sometimes we'll just check you and you might have to go back home. And at this point I'm like, I'm not coming back home. Like you're crazy. And I didn't have a hospital bag at that time because literally two days before that or the day before that I was with my mom and I was like, I need to go and like get all this stuff in my hospital bag. My mom was like, yeah, we'll get it done. But we hadn't done it yet. So <laughs> anyway, we 
we drive to the hospital and I am still like leaking. And it's not even like leaking, you guys. It's like a running tape. Tap. Tap. A running tap. <laughs> I'm still like running. And so like I'm wearing joggers and they're getting wet and the sit's getting wet. And I'm just like, is this supposed to be so much water? And I get to the hospital, it's after hours, it's like night time anyway, it's like midnight at this point. But we get there and they're so busy, almost every room is filled. Like I can hear women screaming and pushing babies out and I'm thinking, oh god, that's about to be me, this is, this is insane. Like there was a lady screaming her heart off, like I was just like, is she okay? Like it was insane. And at this point, I've called my mom and I've been like, my water's broken, I don't have a hospital bag, what am I gonna do? And my mom's like, jumped out of bed. And mind you, she lives like an hour away from me at this point. So she's like an hour and a half away from the hospital. She jumped out of bed, gone to Kmart, cause you know, good old Kmart, 24 hours. And she's gone and had to like, basically get me a few things, a nightgown, I don't know, whatever, like stuff I needed and she was just gonna bring aid and stuff the next day. She was just like worried about like what I was gonna wear and stuff. But I was there for like 30 minutes or so, like just waiting for a room until they gave me a room. And then they gave me a room and they were just wondering, you know, oh, you know, how's Aiden? Can you feel him? And at this point, Aiden is probably like tired and tuckered up from swimming. So he's fast asleep and he's not moving. Like he has no water and he's not moving. He's just like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, I don't feel him moving. Like, and I'm like freaking out at this point. So I'm just like, I'm not going home. I'm not leaving. I don't feel him moving. I'm trying to like, you know, move my tummy, touch him, like do stuff that usually gets a reaction from him and he's just like, no, 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 no. And so they hook me up to all this like stuff that I can't remember their names, <laughs> but basically to check, you know, to make, to monitor me and my vitals and monitor Aiden and stuff. And then they do an ultrasound, just like a quick one. And they can see him, you know, slightly moving, but not really. He's just like chilling, his vitals are fine. But because he wasn't really active, they just thought, okay, I think we're going to induce you. My mom got to the hospital around 1 a.m., 1 or 1 30, 1, 2 a.m. And from there, it was just waiting and the contractions started coming because of, you know, I just got induced, so everything was just getting sped up. And I don't even know how to explain contractions. It is the most painful things. Like I would be going to the bathroom and I would have a massive contraction. I would just stop. <laughs> I couldn't do anything. Like I would stop and I would just be like, oh God, oh God, oh God. Till they went away. It was, it was painful. It was, yeah. Anyway, um, they keep checking me. Cause you know, once they induce you, they check to see whether you are um, dilated enough and basically mine was a slow progress like it just was not happening and I couldn't sleep mom couldn't sleep Mark couldn't sleep like where do you sleep like you know because they only have like these like seats for them and a bed for me but it's hard for me to sleep because every time I close my eyes you know every minute or so I'm just like a contraction and then I just like oh, I, I doze off and then I'm like <laughs> so it was like hard for me to even catch some sleep went on from that time from like 1 a.m. till basically the next day like my like in the afternoon because nothing was happening and they kept saying you're not like you're not dilated enough you're not dilated enough like we can't like the, you know like we gotta wait and my mom, I told my mom and Mark, I was like, just go home, you know, it was like 3 p.m. No, it was like, no, it wasn't that afternoon. It was like 12 p.m. I was like, just go home. You guys need to go get some sleep, you know, just go. Like, I'll be fine. It started getting a bit scary because the nurses kept coming in and going, oh, you know, you're not dilating enough. Like, it's, you know, my blood pressure was starting to go up. Aiden's heartbeat was getting erratic. And by this time, I'm like by myself, so I'm like calling Mark, like, come back here, like, you know, so they only got a couple hours worth of sleep, and they were back in the hospital by like 5 p.m., and I was just 
freaking out like this isn't happening like I've been in labor since last night like 15 hours like what's going on like he's not coming I'm not dilating enough like this is crazy and you know you see one doctor and then you see like a bunch of nurses coming in and out in and out in and out and you know one nurse is fine but when they're like three four nurses and everybody's checking on you you start getting a bit worried and it was a bit like nerve-wracking but um after about 16 or so hours i had a new doctor come in and they were basically like we've tried to wait you know but your blood pressure keeps rising aiden's like vitals are getting funny like his you know heartbeat keeps going up and down up and down like it was getting scary and they were basically like we can't wait anymore i know you don't want to do this but we're gonna have to have a c-section at, at that point crying like I'm gonna cry right now like I don't even want to cry but okay I started crying because I was like I didn't plan for this um this isn't what I wanted um yeah I don't want this <laughs> but it's like you know my mom and Mark you know made me feel better they were just like as long as he's happy he's healthy you know you're healthy like that's the main point you guys are gonna be great like we you know we have to do what's best for him and and me at that point because you know I was you know starting to get like really high blood pressure but it was just it was just so emotional because it's like you have this like image in your head and you know you walk into the hospital and you hear these women pushing their babies out and you think oh that's gonna be me and then to be told oh no you can't do that um, we have to go you know basically do a c-section is I almost forgot before I'd even got to that point you guys it was natural up until oh what oh it wasn't even natural up until like a long point it was like natural up until like 6 a.m I was like I'm not doing this anymore I was like no 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 I need epidural like because I had gas up until that point like and I was like, no, no, this isn't working. This gas isn't working because gas needs you to like inhale and breathe at the same time. You're having contractions. That's very hard to do. So like, it just wasn't working for me. And this, uh, um, this nurse was like, okay, you know, before we try epidural, how about how about we try these water injections? You know, we just put two in your back. You know, it'll feel like a slight pinch. You know, it'll be okay. And then after that, we'll do epidural. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, let's do that. Anyway. They come in with these two injections, one nurse on each side, because they have to do it at the same time. And I'm thinking this is gonna be a slight pinch. And they go in and do it. When I say I screamed, I mean the lady that was having birth before, I screamed louder than her. I screamed so loud, my mom was like, oh my god, Nisha, that is so loud. There are women out there like freaking out, having babies. That was too loud. Like that's like that's how loud I screamed. That shit hurt, you guys. She said it was gonna feel like a prick. That shit did not feel like a prick. It felt like okay, as soon as she finished, the way I described it was it felt like they had both stabbed me in the back with knives and dragged those knives down. That's how it felt. I will never do that ever again in my life. In fact, one of the nurses was like, yeah, I've done it once. And she's like, I didn't really want to like, you know, scare you and say it felt like, you know, like that because, you know, it, it works and it does. You know, as soon as it's done, like you feel it, it works, but it's only like for a couple hours and then they got to do it again. So you can only imagine when they came back and they were like, let's do it again. I was like, don't touch me <laughs> I was like you lied this isn't a pinch okay don't touch me so I almost forget about how did I almost forget about that I was like straight to like c-section but no 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 guys this this was traumatic <laughs> like if anybody has ever had those water injections before please tell me because I don't know what your experience was but mine was absolutely horrendous it's probably easier and probably less painful to just do the birth naturally. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, after that, I got my epidural. So I was happy and fine. But the reason why my vital, like why my blood pressure was also rising and why the vitals were a bit funny is because I think I had a bit of a reaction to the epidural. 
because it's supposed to like numb you from like your waist down but it literally numbed me all the way up here so down so it was like messing with my breathing um as well which is why they just wanted me to get to surgery quite quick so after they say that we went into um the operating room like we had to go to the room and we all got ready for the c-section so it was just me and my me and mark um my mum had to stay in the room and mark was all decked out in his hospital uniform looked like a doctor <laughs> and and yeah at this point i was just ready for aiden to just come and i just yeah i didn't care anymore i was just like yep let's get him out let's get him out when anesthetics anesthesia <laughs> When that doctor came and gave me the meds so I wouldn't feel the pain, um, I started having like weird, like after effects. So when Aiden came, like they just pulled him up. You know how they have like a curtain so you can't see them do the operation. They just pulled him up, and I literally like I thought I was gonna cry, I was gonna fall, but I was like so highly medicated. And the medication was making me so drowsy that I couldn't even like, you know, have any type of emotion. Like I was just like so gone. It was just so dead. I was just like, <laughs> like I was just yeah, I, yeah. But I was so happy he was out when I heard him cry, and I was just you know lying there. You can't do anything. You can't really see much. You just like. You can't move your head like <laughs> and Mark's like you know enjoying his time with Lou Aiden who just came and just kind of forgot about me over here on the operating table for a minute like I'll show you guys the video but um no it was it was good it was you know uneventful which was good uh nothing went wrong with him um I got suited sh suited sh suited I don't know you guys I'm having I'm having a moment today I yeah I got stitched up well and there was no problems with that the only issue was after that I couldn't breathe I was having like breathing problems like and they they kept saying like I was having a reaction to the epidural and stuff because it was still like affecting like whenever they touched parts of me like here I, I couldn't feel it like it will poke me and I couldn't feel it they were like you're not supposed to be numb all the way up there but there was nothing they could do about it. They said it would just pass and had to give me this like, like gas mask that helped me breathe, um, which was good. Uh, but yeah, we were so happy. He was finally here. Like Mark was so, I think Mark teared up. I think he cried, but I, I didn't see it. It was just so far. Like <laughs> I couldn't even see you and his reactions, but he said he teared up and he was really happy, which was, which was great. Like. I was happy and just elated that everything had gone so well because I was worried up until that point. But, you know, um, after they wheeled me out, you know, they finally gave him to me because, you know, at that point they don't really give him to you. You're still lying on the table and they're still like, you know, trying to close you up and stuff. So I had to wait for the longest to hold him. Um, but when I did hold him, he was so tiny and he was so cute and I was just like, oh. I can't believe he was in my belly for all that time. It's such an emotional sort of experience. Like you can't even explain it. Like you're just so happy and you're just like, and you're just like in awe that you've just done this. And uh, it's just, it's crazy. But it was such an amazing moment. And you know, when they gave him to me and I got to hold him for the first time and look him in the eyes, I was just like, hey, it's me, I've been talking to you this whole time and you've been hearing my voice, like it's crazy. And he's just like, you know, he actually had, he was actually opening his eyes. He opened his eyes quite early, actually. And he, I don't know, he just, he was so innocent looking. I mean, you've seen Aiden now. <laughs> I'm joking, but he was so innocent and tiny and just, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a lovely experience. Um, I couldn't wait for my mom to see him so they wheeled us back into our room and my mom was there and my auntie was there and auntie Tana was there and yeah it was it was pretty special you guys because this was my 
mum and dad's first grandchild. It was like, you know, it was, yeah, it was, it was perfect. So, yeah. But, yeah, other than, you know, the painful water injection and the un, you know, intended C-section, the side effects of the epidural, I had a good birth. The end of it was great. <laughs> the middle, the beginning, like that was just mm, 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 mm. <laughs> like I couldn't take the pain. I thought I was gonna have a natural birth, so I was just like ready to go without any epidural. But mm -mm, don't be fooled. Like when those pains start coming, it takes a strong woman to say no to the meds. Like I commend you guys who don't have meds because I, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Mm -mm. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, um, it was a wonderful birth. Um, first grandchild out and happy and healthy. And the rest is history. Now you see him crawling around, ready to walk. And it's just amazing to even think a year before he was like literally still in my belly. Just swimming around <laughs> but no I, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video I mean I really you know um, was hoping to at some point share this story with you guys because it was it was a lot of emotions it was up and down and happy and sad and sore but it was ultimately the best thing that ever happened to me and I will like forever remember like I would never forget that experience ever so I really hope you guys enjoyed the video um you know let me know you know of your guys experience because <laughs> I'm planning on having baby number two and hopefully mine will just be like boop, boop, out you know quick nice and quick we'll see but yeah I wish everybody can feel this like immense love for you know a human being that they've never met it's like I don't know it's just like a powerful experience but I wish that on everybody because it's amazing but yeah thank you so much guys for watching um if you enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't don't forget to subscribe so you can join our youtube family and as usual i will see you guys next week have a good weekend bye